Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to Slice and Dice, the dice based strategy roguelike that I'm very excited to be back to here today. This may very well be the best roguelike that you have not heard of. I've been screaming that from the rooftops since 2021. More people have definitely heard of it since then. But now there is a 3.0 release for the game, a huge new update, and with that, a Steam release, which I feel like is one of the major things that was holding it back from reaching a wider audience. So hey, now it's out on Steam, major update, tons of changes, in we are gonna go to show off this wonderful, wonderful game. I have reset my save file for this 3.0 release, so that is what we're gonna do. All right, so in we go. Slice and Dice, it is relatively simple and elegant, but I will go over the basics anyways. We have a bunch of characters that each have dice. They are represented by these six faces. This is just an unfolded die. These are all the faces on it. This, you can probably rightly assume, is an attack, and it does one damage. This is an attack, and it does two damage. This blocks damage, you know, one damage. You can get the picture, like the symbol is what it does, and you can always right click it to see exactly what it is, but you'll come to learn what the symbols mean relatively soon. And then the pips right here is how many of that thing it does. So two damage, one block. Simple as that, but other characters are gonna have different ones. They're gonna get a lot more complicated as they go on. These characters will level up and get more advanced dice. And it is a dice builder, so we can actually change some of these faces using items. That being said, here we go. First things first, we rolled this right here. We rolled a couple attacks. These are probably the best outcomes for these characters. Probably. Uh, we also have a couple duds right here. You can see the X's. That's nothing. We've rolled a nothing. So obviously, that's not good. But what we can do, we have two re-rolls a turn. The tutorial is telling me to use them. We have rolled a three block, which is a pretty darn good outcome. Probably the best outcome for the defender. Interestingly, we have two fighters, a thief, and two defenders, which is abnormal. Uh, so that's already a different thing in this version for the starting loadout. Uh, I believe that there's going to be a change to that at some point, if I am not mistaken. So now we have selected what we were going to do. We have our attacks. We have our defenses. Let's go ahead and try and figure out what we're going to do. So this wolf is doing one damage to all three of these. This one is doing four to a single target which is a little bit tougher to deal with. We'll maybe try and uh, kill one of these because we can block pretty much all of the damage. The, the three shield is ended, like, ending up being a little bit wasted, but I think it's okay. Uh, if we end the fight with, you know, anyone dead, that will become a problem. However, it doesn't matter if they end the fight at one health, two health, three health, it's irrelevant. Uh, so let's go ahead and lock in some damage. We could try and fish for a better roll on you. Which, do I want to? It's a little bit risky. I'm going to say no. It doesn't real. there's not actually really a risk, because like I said, we're not going to die here. So we'll block all of that damage. We can even do one, two, three on the keyboard to speed through that a bit quicker. Uh, so, yeah, this is... The tutorial is just showing what the health system will kind of look like. This means you're missing an HP. This is incoming damage. This is incoming poison damage. Uh, you know what? I'll just I'll hit an intern. Sure. The wolf is trying to flee. Will you let them escape? Usually, I feel like there's not a reason to not. There's no gameplay benefit to uh, either way. So I think we're just going to go ahead and let them auto flee. Well, I'll just say yes for now, because maybe there's an item or something in which that'll be relevant. Heroes will fully heal between fights. We also get to now level up a hero. So it's randomly chosen which hero, and it's also randomly chosen which upgrade. So there are multiple different paths for every class. The fighter can be upgraded in a bunch of different ways, uh, and then you can go down different routes, kind of like a... Uh, I don't know, like a digi-evolution. Uh, something like that. So we can pick either the Scrapper or the Warden. The Warden is a very straightforward character. It's just a better version of the Defender. Or we can go for the Scrapper. One damage and steal. For every shield I have, I will do one more damage. Obviously, you can see how that could be kind of fun. One damage, Bloodlust. Plus one pip for every 
enemy that is damaged. I think let's go ahead and just grab the warden for now, like not to mess things up too much for uh, getting too complex. The same reason that I didn't do the wonderful unlock all feature that exists in the game. Uh, just so that we can keep things a little bit more easy to digest if this is your first time seeing a game. So, the goblin is doing three damage to the target that has the least amount of health. This is just two damage, if I remember correctly. This is more or less just two damage. Yep. Two damage. So, what do we want to do here? What Out of this, what do we want to do? It's worth noting the archer is in the back line, which means I cannot target them unless I have a ranged attack. That's what the bow is going to be for there. I think let's re-roll, see if we can maybe uh, grab that. I just realized this is actually one of your worst outcomes for that warden. So maybe we should have... Uh, okay. Monsters show their intents. Going to go ahead and... Uh, hmm. Fleas if alone. We will need the thief to roll the archer ability if we want to uh, do anything about that. I think let's take out the rat. Do a shielding. What else do we want to shield? I'll shield the thief. Sure. Worth noting, there's normally like a healer class and a, uh, a mage class as well. Which is a curious, curious note. I think I saw something about a green character maybe too? But I could be wrong. If, if so, that's a new thing. Are we going all in on damage? We gotta think about this. Not really. It, we don't really need to think about this. They're they're kind of um, they're spreading the damage out pretty thin. We'll get rid of the rat because again, if we can get the archer killed with a ranged attack, then uh, quite frankly, everything is fine. We heal up to full. How low we are on HP is not important. Two damage. Go for a two damage and one damage and hopefully get another two damage. Oh, we are more than fine. Go for our one damage. We are so much more than fine. All right, so we alternate between getting a level up and a item. So this is how we're going to be able to sort of modify our dice. Character becomes immune to shield but gets two max HP. We'll replace the left side with one damage cantrip activates whenever it lands face up. So we don't even need to pick it. It just, if we ever roll this, it just happens. It's a pretty good thing. However, an important thing you will eventually, you know, you'll probably learn about slice and dice. The leftmost uh, space is usually pretty good. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to replace that on a lot of these fools. I feel like I could do it on the fighter. Like, because a cantrip can be really good. So we drag this. There are two slots. You can put two items on any specific character. Uh, I think I'll go for this. There's an argument for popping it on the thief, since we're going to be trying to roll these, but I think ranged attacks are quite useful as well. Especially since, you know, look, we got these archers. Be nice to get them out of the way. Cantrip, that activated. I'll take that. I think I might want to go for the block. On you, and I'll, I'll definitely just lock this one. Roll again, try and get another cantrip if we can. All two achievement. Hmm. So this has this kind of thing. The inner HP must be removed individually. So basically, we can do a whole bunch of damage to them, but they will survive at one health. I uh, needs to be done as a separate attack. So we have two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. So we could take you out. It's a little bit risky. If there is a skull on the end turn button, a hero is about to die. So the fun thing is, I can go ahead and just kind of play out my entire turn. And if it's a problem, we can just undo. If we see it the end of the turn and we don't like it, 
We just go, hey, never mind. But here we are already good. Bye-bye. Rogue or the Monk? A random tier 2 level up is always an option now as well. That's kind of interesting. I kind of like the idea of the Rogue. One damage and a poison, which will act like you would probably assume poison would. One damage at the end of every turn. The fun thing is it never goes away, uh, but which is quite good. Cruel. Two times damage if they have half or less HP. Cantrip, we've learned what that does. Dodge all, I mean, damage and enemy effects. I think we're going to go for that. Monk is pretty fun too. But let's go for the rogue. We could slap the, uh, I mean, the, the cantrip on the rogue. We could just go full cantrip die. But I feel like this is going to be really nice. This is four damage if they're under half health. Uh, so a big thing we're going to want to, like, as much as I can try to get something, I would really like if we could get uh, poison. The troll has something called regen. One health at the end of every turn. If we can poison them, we can at least nullify that, which would be really nice. Oh, ideal. Okay, so they're at least not going to heal, theoretically. Because normally they would be healing one, or they'd be poison. There's a little bit of damage. Alright, uh, I'm just going to shield the ones that are more likely to die, because they have lower health. I think that's fine by me. Undo an action. There we go. Just for the tutorial's sake. Just to, just to show that off there. I could turn it off completely, but I think it might be kind of nice to have something to... Uh, <laughs> remind me of some things to do. So, I'm not gonna die or anything here. I might as well just kind of go guns a-blazing. I think we can do that. Fun thing about cantrip, we can also use it as an attack. Goodbye. Fletching. Add ranged to the left side. Can target enemies in the back row and avoids on-hit passives. Forgot about that part. Add single use and plus one pip to the two right sides. It's not bad. Ranged to the left side. Doesn't really matter too much on cantrip, but kind of does. Because this, I think, can already hit... Uh, well, no, I actually don't think it can hit a random, but the nice thing about that would be that we could... Um, randomly roll into cantrip it could hit somebody somebody spiky somebody with like a thorns type effect and it wouldn't impact us negatively that'd be the nice thing there so i'm just gonna grab it i don't know what i want to do with it yet there's an argument for uh the cruel attack but what are the odds that an enemy that we need ranged to hit is going to be at half or less health unlikely i think we probably just slap that on the fighter so more or less these are the same now uh, or not, these are the same. This and the old rogue's attack would have been the same. Ah, good god. You guys are terrifying. This is a little bit bold, but I think we can get away with it. Okay. So... We are at an awkward spot for for the cruel, though, at the very least. Uh, you're doing four damage. I think I would like you gone probably the most. So, boom. We're already fine. This guy's going to run away. If we can kill the snake, that's what that white flag is going to be about. I think that there's like a fast enemy turns. Is there a fast roll? think so. Alright. Uh, the poison's not bad, but we might as well reroll, try and go for something a little bit better. Okay. Alright. Fighter upgrade. We have the armorer. Three damage heavy. Target must have the most amount of health. Does a lot of damage, but, but yeah. Shield one smith. Target gets plus one to damage and shield sides this turn. Is pretty fun. 
Shield one in a cleave, cleave meaning that it'll be them and everyone on their side, so a one shield and an AoE, which is quite nice. I think I might go for the armorer. Two damage and shield yourself for two is nice. One damage twice as much if they have full HP. Like, it's good and all. I just kind of want to go for the gladiator, or the armorer. Instead of gladiator. Don't think I really want to swap any of this. Oh boy. Plus one pip to all sides this fight. So basically, whenever we cross that threshold, we get a problem. Flees if an adjacent monster is overkilled by two or more. It's a little bit risky if we start killing the ogre and we don't and we don't successfully kill the ogre. That's an important note. Does range... On-hit passive. So that's not going to be an on-hit passive. Um, Alright. So a little bit yikes. Three damage. One, two, three. Four, five. You know, you're taking two damage. The fighter's obviously going to die there if we do that. I think that's something we can't really afford to do. Let's go for one more reroll, risking it a little bit. Not good enough. Not good enough. Uh, so we are actually going to take a smack in here. Annoyingly. I have to hit you here. So, Gur, he says. Unlucky on the warden not rolling any of the shields there. But hey, we didn't have to increase that damage, but I think we also just might as well. All right, this is this is now the question. Do I enrage you to try and go bank on the... Uh, overkill by two or more is actually not very likely for us. We only have one thing that can do three damage, unless we get lucky with the rogue's ability. That guy's not dead forever. Don't worry. So you are attacking the rogue with the two. So the cool thing, I do actually see the pathway towards us being fine already. But let's go ahead and go for... the end of each turn. I think it happens when we would want. But we'll just go for the less greedy play here of being like, hey, maybe that poison's gonna matter, because truthfully we're probably just, yeah, we're probably just gonna roll enough damage. It's irrelevant. Okay. Defeated heroes will return with half HP. They're not, good, like, dead forever. They come back. At the start of each turn, the hero will self-shield for one. That seems new to me. Add wham to the two right sides. Times two damage against targets with shields. It only helps the rogue. Wait. Wait, no, 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 no. Times two, not times two damage, just times two against targets with shields. So we could, like... Do the shield smith, and then if we give them a shield with the warden, and then we give them the shield smith, then we would upgrade their die face by three, and that could actually get kind of nasty. There's nothing wrong with the enchanted shield, though. It's it's so free. But I feel like magnet, we could start to get something kind of busted going on. T3 items are about three times as good as tier one items. Alright, what do you got going on here? If an enemy I target gets five plus shields, I flee. Okay. I like that. So we're going to go for shields on you, and then... See, the thing is... 
I'd have to overflow you, then I could get you to flee, which is kind of appealing at the very least. I think that that's a completely acceptable play there. Slimer summons a Slimelet every 5th HP. Uh, we have four. I don't want to summon the Slimelet this turn. So we will actually waste the one damage so that we don't have to worry about it. Should be A-OK -okay here to just completely uh, body the fool. We actually already have enough. Goodbye. Soldier. Just a very straightforward upgrade. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. There's a whole bunch of other classes that are going to get more complicated. I do promise you that. On top of the fact that I think there's a lot of new ones. And there's a mysterious, extremely random thing as well that we'll get to when we get to. Brute. Another version of that is interesting. Stun an enemy that has equal or less HP than I. Ooh. I don't really want to go for this, though. I'll hit me with a random. Whatever. Whirl. Cleave. Okay. One damage cleave. Could be really nice with the, like, the upgrade from the, the armorer. You get the plus two to this, so it does three damage in an AoE. That could be fun. One damage to all enemies. So, for a lot of fights... It's going to be relatively the same. Three damage, one damage cleave. Shield. Sounds good to me. Fighter items unequipped. I don't care about the range on that one. Doesn't really matter to me. It's unlikely that the person in the back will have the highest health, but there are some fights in which there will be. Uh, specifically, there's like a necromancer boss where he's very healthy and he's in the back line of a bunch of skeletons. That's kind of a situation where this with range could be pretty good. For now, it shouldn't matter. It's basically, it's down to passive effects. Two damage to the middle enemy. Okay. Two damage to the topmost enemy. Works for me. Summons a wolf. Don't love that. Seven damage to the enemy with the most health. Two damage to the top most enemies. No. Three damage and hits the target below. So, okay. Simple enough. I think the three damage to everybody business is totally fine. I think there's nothing wrong with that. I don't love a summoner being around for a long time. You can weaken my dice. You can poison. I mean, but you're not doing the poison right now. I'm leaning towards the top line because just getting a bunch of extra summons in the mix is going to be a problem. I think, I think we can do better. I was hoping for some single target damage here. I'm going to risk the rolling of a dud. All right. Didn't end up being that big of a, of a get for us. We'll just poke all of them. So now we can go for anyone. We do three damage here. We can actually kill. So then the wolf never comes out. Which I really do like that for us. Two damage to the middle enemy. Two damage to the bottom most enemy. We'll go ahead and block for you, I think. I think I care more about you than the fighter at this point. Seven damage to the highest health enemy doesn't bother me. We have a lot of enemies with, uh, or a lot of units with very high health. Let's see, he's he's getting hit over here. It's kind of like a who cares moment. We could find the way to cleave, but we'd also be shielding someone that is um, not really attacking, anyways. I'm going to chance a, uh, a cantrip. A poison works too, I guess. Yeah. 
here, here's what could be kind of nice about that. We shield you. This is a little bit of a waste, but also, you know, three damage and a poison is pretty good. Because that is three poison. They are, in fact, gonna die. We're A-OK. -okay. Bye-bye. And now we can probably be okay with anything here. Bottommost enemy. Not a problem. We just kind of want to get a lot of damage, because... Why even bother with anything else right now? Boop. All right, unlock a door. Splitting arrows, re replace the two right sides with one damage ranged cleave. That's kind of nice for the fighter. Uh, just gain three max HP. There's nothing wrong with that, but splitting arrows sounds fun. So who do we, we want to give this to? Maybe you. It does mean we're going to rely on a one-two punch wombo combo from the warden and... Well, I guess we could get the cleave. Eh, there we go. The imp. So here we go. This is an on-hit thing. On-hit damage the attacker. So ranged attacks are going to be really nice. Four blocks sounds really nice. Uh, that seems like a great call as well. One damage to adjacent allies when you die. Sure. Alright, so you just go ahead and hide. That's, that's going to be quite helpful. Alright, keep you alive. A little bit, uh, a little bit risky. So you do have the cantrip. So I'm going to go ahead and shield you one more, just in case your random cantrip kind of explodes here. And hits somebody that we don't want it to. Same, same. Alright, so we can get like a little bit of a chain reaction going here. I could be okay with you attacking. Who are you attacking? You're attacking here. The, these are all dying, so the only one we really need to worry about is the rogue, and technically, like, our, um, our cantrip attacks could be a little bit scary here as well. We're, we're all good. We, we've done it. Alright, um... Just trying to be very careful with the ordering so I don't mess things up. Cool. It's relatively volatile. All right, this is our final level two upgrade. There are more upgrades after this. Four damage, and I take four damage. One damage and a cleave, three damage, death wish. Does double damage if I would be dying this turn. So it's important to note that you could do that and then fix the dying. I guess I'm leaning towards the gladiator. I don't really want to have the can trip in this fight. Because this guy has the on hit business. And he is going to do two damage to us if we attack him. Obviously not great. Poison's very good. We're going to want to go for a bunch of direct shielding. This is probably going to get us... I think that gets us hurt, but... Meh. <sighs> it's damage without us being hit back. Not good, if I'm going to be quite honest. I'm willing to take that two damage if we get that the, uh, the spike going. I think that's really good. Do I want to summon the slime? I don't know if I want to summon the extra slime. I think I might actually willingly accept to waste that one dice. I think it might be in my best interest there. Uh, so this is relatively useless. 
We could try and get lucky. Oh, we, we could also get the cantrip. But we could try and get lucky and get uh, dodge all damage and enemy effects this turn. Obviously, that has uh, large potential to be very good. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I like this. I like this. So we have the three damage and the poison. If we're willing to get a little bit wacky with it, that guy is very much going to go away uh, pretty darn soon. If we hit him one more time, it's going away next turn. But then we also have the Slimer. I think I'm willing to summon the Slimelet. It's two damage. I think it'll be okay. Please, Rogue, do not cantrip the top. Thank you. That was scary. I'm going to lock that so that we don't, uh, we don't mess things up. Boom. Uh, boom. Boom. We're good. We, we, we've, we've got it on this. So obviously we do the three damage there. AoE attack followed by the gladiator attacking. Works for me. There's nothing wrong. One max HP. HP. Replace the rightmost side with stun an enemy with equal or less HP. Yeah. Add sticky to all sides but you gain a re-roll. Uh, so for that character, it, we're basically guaranteeing we have to take whatever they take, but we get more re-rolls across the board. Kind of appealing. I think that the Warden with Fearless is pretty darn good, though. The ability to potentially stun fools, like, obviously that side is by far our worst. Is there a reason why Cantrip's a problem here? Maybe, maybe not. But I also don't think I want to... I don't think I want it anymore. I think all my left sides are too too good. It's a level 1 item. It's not surprising. There's an option to bypass achievements and unlock everything. Uh, we might end up using that, honestly, like tomorrow if you guys want me to play more. Alright, we can just completely stun one person. I would maybe rather have the three damage right now. Or at the very least, the whirl. Enemies target randomly, but prefer targets that are not already dying. So who's the, uh... Who's the most annoying? If I see a target, get five shield. So we're not going to get a target, get five shield. At least not right now. But maybe that will change with, like, the Slimer. We might be able to, like... I don't know. We might be able to fix that. Slime that we could kill in one. Armor works for me. Three damage. We cannot kill the Sniper. I like the idea of just getting the Slime lit out of the way. Alright, uh, you, so you're already saved, and you're targeting. Perfect. We can go one, two. That's already fine. This guy's just gonna literally run away. This guy's a new, it's a new type of enemy. And a pretty fun one at that. I already see the, uh, the pathway here. Bye. All right, here's our first level three. So there's like a big branching path of options. Um, sniper, two damage range copycat. Copy the keywords from the previous dice used. Can target the back row, avoids on hit and passives, kills an enemy with six or less HP. Could definitely be useful. Stoic, two damage shield, redirect all damage and enemy effects from an ally to me. I don't really, I don't know if I want that right now. And then, but it also does self-shield. It could be good, it's also terrifying. We'd have to rely on like the armorer to, I don't know. Let's go for the sharp shot. Feels nice to me.
the range is basically irrelevant. It would be an on-hit effect thing, if anything. Which doesn't seem relevant. I'll put it on somebody, because why not? That's the whole reason. Alright, here we go. All heroes get minus one max HP at the end of every turn. It's going to also be doing poison in a cleave. Is this... Eh, I was going to say, is, it, is this your worst thing? But the thing is... Um... Oh! We can use engage and then copy it. Wait, that's incredible. Uh, we'll go for this. We might be able to bump... Oh my god, we can... We can do some wacky stuff. We just need a shield here. A novel concept. Just, what if my tank could get me a shield here? Thank you. This is a lot of overkill. However. Is this actually five damage doubled to ten? No? Oh, wait, no, no, no. What am I thinking? I was, I thought I grabbed the, the copycat. This is good, but it's not that good. I was, I was, that was false pretense for what I was excited about. <laughs> um, okay, so with that new plan, we have to work with what we've got. It does feel like that could be still fine. I think the other option is upgrading the cleave is okay. You could do like a two damage, two damage cleave, which does do a little bit of damage to this guy as well. Don't hate it. You're poisoned and you're getting a little bit of the other damage as well. I could hit you and then the gladiators mostly save too, but that's a lot of damage wasted. I think it's going to be okay. Summoning a skeleton. Summoning an imp. Okay. So we can instant kill the one guy. Which means no damage is going to be coming in. I mean, you can do better. But you didn't. Alright, your plan is just instant kill that man. No reason not to. Uh, the shielding is irrelevant here. We can't do anything about the poison. Imp a little bit scary. We do have the nice ranged individuals. So here's the thing. Yeah, this was... This is what I was trying to copy. That's actually nice. Well, what would I copy then? I mean, who care? Who cares, I guess? The only thing I would want to copy would be... Self-shield. But this is just such a good way to instantly one-shot the, uh, the gladiator. Get the range. It doesn't matter, so in short, I'm actually going to re-roll that on this turn. And I'm going to accept the three. I think that's good enough. Uh, bonk. Bonk. Lol. Not fair achievement. Stun an enemy with 20 plus max HP. Get wrecked. I mean, we already have it, don't we? Cool. Sparks, add cantrip to all sides that have exactly one pip. Pretty darn good for the world, but also really scary, because uh, this fight, he's got spikes, obviously. Hand trip? Hmm. Hand trip? Shield cleaves is kind of fun. What's tooth necklace? Add cruel to the left two sides, times two damage with... It's pretty darn good, too. Like, especially for the whirl. This could be doing 6 damage or 2 damage in the AoE. I'm going to go for the Sparks, though. I'm a wild guy. I think I'm going to put it over here. As weird as it is, I think that that is going to be kind of nice to have just a, a big spread. Swap 2 items on a hero. 
Yeft. It is worth noting. It doesn't matter here, but there's some situations where it does the order that it's applied. Because you could change something. Like, imagine if this subtracted a value from, like, two pips down to one. Uh, it would matter if that happens before or after this item gets applied. Uh, here it does not. There's an interesting argument for doing... Well, that already has cantrips, so who cares? Alright, we good to go? I think we are good to go. Chaos. Use a side that has three plus keywords. So you got the shield. Okay, so that's the... Okay, that's gonna be the weird thing, though. I mean, the good news is we can just replace the item on somebody else. Six for less health. Two, four, six. I might be able to get you out of the way. I can definitely stun somebody. Okay. That I'm liking. Obviously, that's bad. Okay, hold on. So we could do... How much health do you have normally? Ten? Thirteen. Feels hard to pass that up. But can we... We can't stun you, then. So we actually have a, a unique situation to maybe, like... Well, but then this can't kill anybody. So, yeah. The, we can't use them both. So what would I rather do? I think I'd rather get one completely out of the way. And say who cares about the stun for this turn. I think that'd be my preferred... Ooh, wait, okay, so it does work with the die that they currently have. Can, uh, cantrip, wham. It's already ranged, though, and I feel like we could maybe do better, right? Like, what would I, what else would I care about? Self-shield? Yeah, maybe. I do like the idea of it just doing a ranged attack. Oh, boy. Conk. Bonk. Damage and self-shield. And we can just stun the man. <laughs> yes, he can escape. Goodbye. Alright, this is either you become the veteran, which is just the highest basic guy. You are just good. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> he is, he's Mario, basically. Or we could go for the bash that has five damage heavy, seven damage exert. Replace all sides with blanks until the end of the next turn. It's a really good, like, final command. Uh, two damage steal. We do like steal. Another chance for a stun. All right, I like this weirdness. I really like this weirdness. That being our ranged attack feels about right as well. We can very specifically kill one fool become immune to damage this turn. Or we could just outright kill you in one, which is fun too. Exerted next turn. Reduce damage taken from abilities and dice by one. I think we do want that. The heavy is interesting. <laughs> Especially if we could get hit with another one of those... I think a stun is a good call here. Cool. Alright, so this is up to six. Does that work? It does work. Okay. It is a little bit of a bummer in a way. Oh, you're not in the front row. Hold on. Order, order of operations matters here. There we go. Um, lol. Do you still get exerted next turn, I wonder? You guys can run. <laughs> I would too. That was pretty messed up. Bloodlust to the middle side, plus one pip for each damaged enemy. Set all sides to two. I don't think we have anyone where that's good. Wait. Actually, I tell a lie. 
That one could be really good, but this is just immediately useful. The two AoEs being upgraded is really, really nice. Holy. I do like the ranged being here. Two in the cleave. I would prefer the whirl. Interesting. Um, very interesting. We could shield, boom. We could make you run away because we could overkill you by two or more. Yeah, I like that. Um, I like that indeed. We could go for a... Believe I'd rather get the world. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so now we don't even need to... Ooh, this is weird. Okay. Because we can snipe. I'd rather snipe uh, you... Making that guy run away, leaving us with what situation? Okay. If I'm willing to do this and risk it next time, I'm okay. Victory. Win 15 fights. Paladin heal and shield for three. Ah, oh, we do get rid of our fun little um, hand trip business. We could move it up to the whirl, in which case we'd have to use the... I don't, I don't know. The warden could become the Valkyrie. Would still have the potential for the stun, but loses health, actually. Target ally, they can't die this turn. Shield for two. If you rescue somebody, you can use it again. Bonus damage, death wish. Revive the two top most defeated allies. Uh, I actually can't. I'm going to take a random. You know, there is uh, definitely a world where that's good. But set all sides to two does become a little bit awkward. We could do it. See, that's the other thing. We could do it in that order. Then this suddenly is shield two, uh, shield two, smith two. Uh, they, that way, they don't need to have shields on them for it to be relevant. It's kind of nice. But I'm not sure. It does weaken the hell out of this move. We got some we got some thinking to do for sure. Set all sides to two is very, 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 very awkward right now. It's pretty much only potentially good on the arm roar. And it, it's only good if we get rid of the wham. Meme dream. I think it's worth... I think it's worth. Arrow cleave, we could give that to somebody else. Who would we give it to? Brawler. I think we're I think we're done on those. We might as well give somebody wham, but the question is like, does it who who cares? It'd be for like a damage thing on somebody. It's either here and like we get lucky. Sure. Sure, whatever. Kill the topmost enemy. Woo, boy. Loving that. Okay. The shielding across the board was hilarious. The Oh, the bash rolled their dead side. Alright. Um, we'll shield up top, because obviously they're the only ones that haven't got anything. This move gets stronger as we get more freaking armor, so obviously that ended up being pretty good. I would really prefer not to get super duper poisoned, but there's not much of a thing I can do about that. 
three unblockable damage at the end of each turn and minus three to all pips this turn the next just the next turn i'm assuming it's so one poison on the armor i don't really care but I will get rid of it anyways. We're going to want to try and obviously pop this with a ranged attack. That's the ideal in this like situation. I feel like we can do that. It's minus three, but... Let's hope for the cleave. Oh. I don't know, man. I think that one makes more sense. I think we're just going to hope you roll one of your... Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to go for this, even though the armor is taking some damage. I think it just makes more sense to go about it this way. Uh, I don't know if I want to do this one. Actually, I think I have to. Right? Wait, isn't it ranged? Kill the topmost enemy. It's a passive effect, doesn't it? Does ranged attack not... I thought this went... Avoids on-hit passives. Is this not an on-hit passive? Interesting. Well, in that case, I'll just end this anyways. I'll end it. I'll accept the L. I thought that that's kind of uh, that was the whole the whole old gimmick. But oh well. Bye bye. Add vulnerable to the top and bottom sides. Target takes plus N damage from dice and abilities this turn. Triple the pips of the rightmost side. Whoa. Who is that good for? Could obviously be good on there. It's the only one it's good on. Hmm. Add vulnerable. Target takes plus N damage. That's actually pretty good on bash. Because we can tar like we target the highest health one and then all of a sudden they start exploding just like that. It's pretty good. It's pretty darn good indeed. All right, I think we're good. On hit, turn attacking side to stone. So that's the on hit. I, okay, so never mind. Never mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I mean that can't save. No guarantee that we're gonna Ooh, nice. Awkward, awkward, awkward. I kinda wanna roll and try and get another one. But this obviously could be useful as well in a different way. Alright, no dice. So yeah, the fun thing is... We can do that if we want to. The question is, is that what we want to do? Okay, you're the target of, it, of all of them anyways. So I think the answer is... Hmm, I think the answer is actually we want to go for you. And then what? Do we do we petrify this? I think I'm okay with that. We should be good to go. It's already a relatively good start, but I don't like the... Okay. 
That was nice. Shields up. We could cleave. Got the damages. Okay, so hold on. This is doing enough. So it would have to be the front line. Uh, hold up. It's doing so much. Hold on. It's doing way more than we need. But we have... We were always doing more than we needed. That was just silly. That's all that is. <laughs> okay. Um, unfortunately, I think, yeah, we're going to have to sub somebody out here. I think the Paladin is not a bad call. Heal and a shield. I think that works. The Warden gets to keep this. And then he does get the more health that way. I don't mind that. Still leaning towards nothing here. Shield 4 cleanse. You can also remove negative effects by 4. Which is just obviously very helpful. We could remove up to 4 poison with something like that. That combo is, is just good. You can kill any one individual. Okay. Um. Okay. What is the play here? Because we can obviously snipe somebody and kill one. So, like, let's let's wait a sec. I think we snipe you. That keeps us... That doesn't keep us alive? Well, oh, you're targeting... I was looking at the gray there. Uh, oh, none of the snipers are going for... Gotcha. Okay. I thought one of the snipers was going for us. Hmm. So obviously we can just basically explode one of these. But I was thinking it could be kind of fun to do this. Because we get to reuse it that way. And we could do another five. Which is just... It's just nice. It's nice to do. Is this the best possible way of handling this? No. Not really. Not at all. Uh, but it's a completely acceptable one. of These guys are harming themselves. And we will be able to clean this up really easily from here. I think it's kind of the big thing. Uh, that's incredible. That's... Yeah, we already have it. I feel like I don't even need to look to know. Bonk. Bonk. Uh. Have a little extra bonk for fun. Alright, I like that. Copy the left side onto the entire middle row. Huh. I actually don't like that for us. Add rescue to the top and bottom sides. It can be used again if it saves a hero. Wow. I am... I'm disappointed that I don't want that. Well, I don't mind it on the brawler. I don't mind it on the brawler at all, so we'll, we'll do it because it will become really good later. And it's, al it's already pretty good. It's already pretty good. There's more or less nobody that this is relevant on, but the enemies could have shields, so sure. Ooh, we could do some silly stuff. Do I try and chance another armorer? It's like I I like the idea of going for uh just like a non-stop killing spree. Can we get there though? I don't know if we can get there.
incredible. I'm not chancing that anymore. Um, That should be good. The bash. So who's attacking? You're attacking the top line. I like the idea of just probably one shot killing the Wiz is probably the answer. Um, So in that case, yeah, let's just do a bunch of damage. Screw it. What does this do? For us, I mean, a lot. Um, you have to, yeah, you have to hit the troll, obviously. Okay, but if I did this, would you still have to hit the troll? And in this case, okay, so their self damage does not count. All right, that was my question. I think we kill the whiz. I think that's a no brainer. This is like a, this is a weird one. I think we go bonk, bonk. And then I guess we're just allowing that guy to away himself. You gonna run? You're not gonna run. Dang, dude. You know, credit where credit's due. I would run. Troll Slayer. Kill two trolls. All right, our final. So I'm in a I'm in a spot where I actually might. This is a rarity. This is a rarity. I think I'm better off if I don't if I just skip. I think that the unique ability afforded by Sparks Twisted Bar on the Shield a and the uh, Cleave AOEs is better than anything we would get out of this stuff. It's it's a weird one, but it's such a good game in in the sense that. That becomes sometimes a good choice. It's really nice. Oh my god, we might be able to kill the dragon on turn one. Probably should just grab that attack, huh? Alright. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna weaken you. We're gonna schmack. Schmack. Schmack all on the turn one. Because all of that is doing so much more damage. And uh, Dragon's 100% going to die in this turn. <laughs> and it's not even close. Oh, man. That is silly. That is very silly. Okay. What do we want to do? Perfect. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. There we go. That was, let me tell you, a relatively normal run of Slice and Dice. <laughs> like, it gets wild, but so do the enemies. We have unlocked uh, some new stuff, shortcut thing like that. But here's an interesting thing about this, this game. I really want to express how cool this is. You can bypass unlocks, which is one thing, right? Being able to just unlock everything for free, it's one thing. I've seen other games do it. This game is really cool in which you can do that. I can unlock everything. You unlock literally everything in the game. But then if you're like, you know what? Actually, now I change my mind. If you turn it off, it syncs it with your achievements. Because every single unlock in the game is, a t is tied to an achievement. An in-game achievement. And it can just go back to exactly how it was or how it would be if you had never done that so if you're like you know what i kind of want to like play around with one of these modes that i know exists or like i want to play around with some of the new characters that i know exist you could just go ahead and turn on that bypass all the unlocks and you are still going to be uh i don't know where the achievements are in fact off the top of my noggin look there's me it's i uh heroes found yeah there's a whole bunch there is just straight up a whole new type of hero. That's very cool. Uh, but hey, there's a, a whole bunch of achievements as well. I think this is probably, no? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. You can go and you can look at your achievements. It syncs up with that. You unlock all the stuff that you're supposed to have unlocked if you turn it off, or you can play with all the stuff. And that's just a really fun thing to go back and forth. Uh, if you're like, I'm getting kind of bored of the stuff I have. And if it's between you, stopping playing the game or not then turn it on like right 
Uh, but alas, alas, this is Slice and Dice. It is so good. It's just genuinely one of my favorite roguelikes of all time. I'm so glad it is finally out on Steam. It is a place where, you know, obviously most people go to pick up games like this. So I'm glad people are going to hopefully check it out now. Uh, it's only nine bucks, and let me tell you, it's extremely worth it. The amount of content in this game is staggering. It is staggering. Like, like I said, the, uh, you saw that when it showed up. The amount of modes is kind of bizarre. And, uh, yeah, more features and everything get unlocked over the course of time as well. It's just quite silly. Go pick it up. Game's fantastic. If you want more Slice and Dice, let me know in the form of a comment down below. If you'd like to see more, I would love to do more, but only if you guys are excited about it. Only if you guys like the video, comment, like that kind of stuff. Uh, that's how I will be notified that you want more. Thank you for watching. My name is Retro Mace. cover indie games every single day with an extra specialty in roguelikes and roguelites. If that is something you're into, this is a channel you should most definitely be subscribed to. Like I said, I've been talking about this game since 2021. So if you just heard about it recently or you're just hearing about it now... Do yourself a favor, do a subscribe. I showcase great games like this all of the time, and often this is one of the very first places that takes a chance on games like this. And then I try and spread the word. And then, hey, guess what? People pick up all the great stuff, but if you want to hear about it years in advance, this is the spot. Thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.